Hello and welcome to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi, coming to you from the KWS headquarters here in Nairobi. Now, we are here for a really critical and exciting experience. The Kenya Wildlife Service team is heading out into the Nairobi National Park to collar a lion. Now, many teams are involved. As you can see ahead of me, there are so many vehicles already lined up to head out into the park. Remember, this is the only national park in a capital city in the whole world. It is a critical exercise and in just a moment, we're going to find out much more about what to expect. Come with me. Well, joining me now is Samuel. He is a chief scientist. Hi, Samuel. Good hey, to good see morning. you. Good to see you. Welcome to Nairobi National Park. Thank you very much. Now, Samuel, so much to look forward to this morning. <laughs> the plan is to collar a lion. Who is this lion that we're collaring today? We have two possible candidates, and a team we saw there looking for them. And it will be a very exciting moment when they tell us which lion we are going to collar and it would probably be a male or a female but we'll know when you get into the park all right so it might be either of the <laughs> two fine why is this collaring exercise taking place what's the need for it this is very important for Kenya Wildlife service because we need to track the movement of these lions nairobi park is a park very close to the city which is surrounded by human activities and we need to know the movements of these lions uh, in the past, there have been incidents where lions have moved out of the protected area and because of breaches of the uh, fences which confine them with the park. So we need to understand exactly with all these developments where our lions are moving and what is the impact of the infrastructure and how do they interact with the other lions within the park. How many lions does the Nairobi National Park have? Currently we have about 38 lions. Sometimes there's some move out, some come in because there are some areas which are not completely fenced. So we. On average, we'll be talking about that five to that eight lions. And how many of those lions are actually collared? At the moment, we have five lions which are collared and whose movements we are tracking. Sam, how exactly does collaring a lion happen and work? We will witness it just now, but how does that collar actually help? This is a process. First of all, we have to identify the individual lion or, lion or a group of lions to collar. Right. Uh, then the vets will move in and that's one or two of them. For today, it will just be one lion. And after darting the lion, hopefully the lion will, will go to sleep yeah. and will be able to go close to it. Then we'll place a collar around its neck. Now, modern technology has come up with collars which can be satellite linked or which can use GMS. Okay. Yeah, but today we'll be using satellite linked collars and we can track the movement of these lions from our offices. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that really is incredible. But you say that you're only going to collar one today and so far just a handful are already collared. How much of an impact is this having? Can you really tell much of the movements of lions by just collaring so few? The, uh, the five are not adequate to give us a comprehensive movement of lions. That's why we are having additional colors. And I think with time we'll move maybe to collar to about 15 or 20 lions so that we can know the movement of pride. We don't have to call everybody because lions live in pride and if we know, we identify the pride, which actually we have a very pretty good idea of, then we can know how their movements are and how they are interacting with others, if at all. All right, as we wait to head into the Nairobi National Park, because the capture team is yet to communicate to let us know that we have found the lion, Let's talk about some of the challenges that um, the lions here in Nairobi National Park face. You touched on it earlier. We are in a capital city. There are human settlements surrounding this national park. And we cannot forget the tragedy that took place in 2016 when one of the National Park lions roamed out that was mo Mohawk and was actually shot dead because it came into contact with human beings. So talk to us more about the difficulties. No, no, the major challenge comes up with limited space for lions. Uh, when Nairobi Park was established, it, it was linked to areas outside the protected area, actually they are the Kapiti Plains. A lot of developments, housing and other developments have come up with, around the park. So the space is ever decreasing. Now this has made it necessary 
to put a fence around the park. And obviously now this limits the movement of the lions. It limits the movement of other animals which are prey to the lions. One of the issues we are facing now, one of the problems we are facing now is a reduction in the uh, lion prey or the food available for lions. And sometimes it may not be adequate to support the current population of about 35 to 38 lions. So this has created a problem and this sometimes leads to lions to get other prey which may be domestic stock. Okay, all right, so there really, really is a big, big important issue here at the Nairobi National Park. This park really is under pressure and hence the reason as to why one of these lions is being collared today. No doubt we're going to have an exciting morning. In just a moment, we'll be heading in to the park. All right, so now we are around number 10 here in the Nairobi National Park and uh, we've stopped because one lioness has been sighted. Sam, is that the lioness that will be darted? This is the lioness will be darting and the team will be shortly going out to follow her and try to dart her. Hopefully it will be successful. All right, and no doubt this is um, a very important moment in terms of safety. Talk us through why we need to be so careful. We have to be very careful because safety is important both to, the, to us and to the lion. We don't want anything to go wrong. So once we are here, we have to be very quiet so that we don't give, disturb the lion unnecessarily. And then the vet will go out, dart the lioness, and then once he thinks that the lioness is asleep, then he will give us a signal for us to go out there because we don't want the lioness to wake up and hurt someone or have the lioness shot because of being a risk to us. Right, and how has this lioness been identified? What work went into ensuring that this is the lioness? Uh, KWS team of scientists has been spending some time out in the bush. They have identified the pride and they have identified two possible candidates as we, men as we mentioned earlier. And the lioness happened to be the closest to us. So right. hopefully this will be a success. If we are very lucky, we may also call a, a nearby male lion, oh, okay. which is very close to the, to the female. All right. Well, yeah. let's hope that we, we find both. Um, right now, the vet is just preparing his things, getting everything ready. And then we will hopefully head out to see that lioness being darted or already darted. Let's wait and see. I can get out. Kitili? Yeah, you can get out. If you're lucky enough, you get the color of the color. Yeah, when I give it. I think Jane should get shots. We should do an interview. Where is she? 
So this lioness behind me has just been darted. There is a lot of activity at the moment. KWS personnel attending to this lioness. Sam, tell us what is happening behind us. The lioness has just gone to sleep, so we use this opportunity to get vital statistics like the body length, look for parasites, get some blood samples for analysis later, and oh, and then the vets will also put a collar. As you can see now, they are placing the collar on. Ah, yes. Why is it critical to get those vital signs? Well, this will later tell us about the lion population. For example, we will be able to know like the average size of lion, mature lions in Nairobi National Park. We will be able to tell about what kind of diseases they have, what parasites bother them, and so forth and so forth. Yeah. Alright, so the collar is being put on now. Um, how long will this collar stay on this lioness for? <laughs> Now the length of the collar is determined by the battery life okay. and we normally program it to send signals uh, probably every two hours initially then we can change it but on average it will take like one, one year to one and a half years. Wow, alright and so that is how long this lioness will be tracked for and how, in how long will this lioness wake up? Because it is very, very unusual uh, for so many people to be so close to a lioness. But as you said, it is currently asleep. How long before it wakes up? Uh, no, it, will, it will depend on when the vet think that every, all the work has been completed. Then they'll put a reversal drug to wake it up. Oh, yeah, so it, yeah. And right now, what state is this lion in? I mean, is it completely sort of unconscious? Yes, it is. It's just like when human beings go to theatre for, for an operation, okay. they go to sleep and then one the vets, uh, well, sorry, one the surgeons finish with the operation, then they de revive the Revive, patient. right, okay, so that's, that's an analogy. <laughs> and uh, once this lioness is awake, what state of mind will it be? Is it again similar to a patient who's woken up in hospital? Actually, it's very similar, but it will not wake up instantly but it will, it will be a gradual process uh -huh. and then it will, initially of course it will be confused and it will be wondering where am i sure. and what is what is thing on my neck right. but with time i think it will get used to that and how uncomfortable will this collar be for the lion because i'm having a look at it now and it, it does look rather heavy and essentially it is you know going to be around its neck for quite a long time yes well, obviously it will be uncomfortable, but uh, with the time, from my experience, they get used to them quite quickly. And they, they try to rub against trees to remove it, but of course it's made in such a way that it doesn't move. All right, for now, Sam, let's just look into the activity and spend a bit of time watching what's going on. <laughs> Four centimeters. Four centimeters. Okay. And then the distance. The distance or the top or both? Both. The distance is two centimeters for the lower. Upper is three point one. It is absolutely fascinating to be this close to a lioness. I've got to say, there is some fear running through my blood. This is such a powerful animal, Sam, and to be this close is very lucky, but right now we are still safe because the lion is yeah, still, still out. Yeah, talking about power, touch these muscles and feel the power in them. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. so this is where they, uh, they can easily kill a, a buffalo or even a giraffe. <laughs> yeah, lions are absolutely incredible. Now let's have a look since we're this close. This is the collar that has been put onto this lion. This is what it looks like. What is this material made out of? Uh, th this material is special material which is supposed to fall off at a predetermined period. 
normally two years. Uh, but we can also t remotely trigger the falling of, of the collar in case it becomes too tight. Right. We can also extend, we have cut a piece which you can use to extend the circumference oh. in case it becomes too tight. How can one determine where this lion is when you're sitting at the office there at the KWS headquarters? Now the current technology enables us to track the movement of this lion from our offices and it is satellite linked so this part of the collar sends a signal to the satellite and then you can pick this signal I mean it's transmitted through the, the internet and you can pick it up from uh, anywhere. This is a counter which makes sure that this part of the collar is always on the right side. Okay. Yeah, so that for communication with the satellite. Right. Okay. And this, of course, is a female lion, a lioness. Now, how different is it when you collar a female and a male? Because males are the ones that tend to roam more because they are very territorial. So, what sense does it make in collaring a female? This female. Tracking will enable us to follow some pride movement within the park, and if they leave the park, we'll be able to tell this pride of, of lionesses or lions has moved out of the park. So, as, as much as males tend to be most solitary or in coalitions, mm -hmm. females' movement is also important to us for management decisions. Right, okay. All right, well, I mean, you can see that this female, although she's out, she still is, of course, breathing, but we don't have much more time before she wakes up, so uh, we better probably... I think we'll, we'll probably have less than five minutes, so we better okay. leave so that we don't stress her. All much. right, yeah. so in just a moment, this female, this lioness, is going to be revived by the vet here in the Nairobi National Park. Stay with us on NTV Wild Talk because when we come back after the break we'll witness that revival. Welcome back to NTV Wild Talk. We're coming to you from the Nairobi National Park where the Kenya Wildlife Service personnel have just collared a lioness. Now the sun is getting much stronger so in just a moment they are in fact going to move the lioness into the shade before it wakes up. <laughs> We are moving to the shed so that uh, so light will trigger to come out. Tonga. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think we are at uh, our <laughs> 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 So it's still taking a little bit of time before this lioness wakes up from her slumber, but Sam, in some cases, this could be a life-threatening situation for the lioness or lion or whatever animal is being darted, isn't it? Yes, it, it can be. Um, Things can never, aren't always perfect yeah. because sometimes they, you never know how the lioness or lion will react to the drugs. That could be just like in humans, some, something which may go wrong. Yeah. And well, fortunately, this is more of the exception than the rule, mm -hmm. but we are just hoping this will be all right. But we have to be very careful in planning, make sure that the, the vets have to make sure that they administer the right dosage. Yeah. They keep the lion in the best condition possible. Yes, yeah. and speaking about the best condition, uh, the lion's face and eyes were covered. Why is that? 
Yeah, because the, the, the drug which is administered uh, keeps the eyes open okay. and this can cause dehydration. And so I, they, they try to preserve as much moisture to the eyes as possible. Right. And then also avoid direct sunlight because with the eyes open, of course, you don't want the sunshine to di shine directly on your, sure. your, your eyes of course. so they could be damaged. And what do we know about this lioness? Um, she looks like she's in beautiful condition. How old is she and what more can you tell us? Yeah, I think this lioness is in perfect health. She, she's about five years old and she belongs to what we call the Middle Park Pride. And when she was found by the KWSN, she was with a male, which is from another pride, which is usually associated uh, with another pride called the uh, Kingfisher? Kingfisher Pride. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, it's, it's rather unusual that they just the two, they were the two of them, but hopefully, I don't know, they were trying to, <laughs> to start a new family. Perhaps, because Perhaps. Uh, when you do see a male and a female alone, they tend to be sort of mating, um, but who knows? Exactly. Yeah, so the, the, the male, I'm, I'm sure probably is worried where he is, where his mate is. Sure. <laughs> so that I, I'm sure he's watching us. Uh, yeah. wherever. <laughs> Wondering what's <laughs> happened to the love of my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it seems like um, this is going to be pretty much a waiting game. We've got to be patient. There is no more that can be done uh, to wake this lion up, to revive her. Um, the vet has injected her to revive her. So now we just have to be patient. Wow, what are they going to do? <laughs> oh, wow. my God. The cup, it's responding. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> 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 I mean, it's yeah, so yeah, comfortable. It's, it's, yeah. Now, this time is the time to just relax behind shades. Yeah. Poor thing, yeah. In her dreams. <laughs> It looks um, like she is up and she's gone round that bush. Um, she did require a bit of prodding by the vet um, because she was out of it for quite a while. Why is it important that um, the KWS personnel stay around as opposed to just leave her be? We have to stay around to make sure that everything is okay. Basically, the lion uh, wakes up and is we have to the vets have to stay around to make sure that now she goes back to sort of what you can call a normal condition okay yeah you, as you can see she's still staggering she's still not yes yes she is staggering looking a little bit drunk but no doubt it is in fact the medication that is still in her body and there she goes down again in the sun now though so that's a good sign <laughs> i can't see her for maybe. Yeah, but I think she is now alert. As you can see, her head is high and she is conscious of her environment. But uh, we still have to stay, the vets have to stay around to make sure that she is fully recovered. And for how long do the vets have to stay around her before they just leave her be? Well, I think they'll stay around as long as it, it will take for her to, to be up 
and moving around normally. It's a good sign that she at least did get up and respond to the prodding. And as you can see, still so many people around eager to capture this incredible exercise. It's not often that one gets close up to a lion that's been collared. Um, so let's just uh, still keep an eye and see what happens. All right, well, it seems as though the KWS vets and personnel are confident that this lioness is going to be okay, as everybody has now headed out and has left the lioness to rest. We can't even see her. She's not in sight anymore. But what is in sight at the moment is uh, some equipment. Now with me is Francis and he in fact is one of the chief scientists here at the KWS and also a PhD student who is studying lions. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. Amazing. So tell us first, Francis, what exactly are you holding? How does this yeah. connect? Now this is a, a VHF uh, receiver uh -huh. and it's used for transmitting a signal from the lion to this uh, repeater. Okay. And uh, basically in case, because uh, the satellite we have here have got two systems. Mm -hmm. One is using uh, a GPS uh, which is downloaded directly from a satellite mm -hmm. after, depending on the way you have programmed. Yeah. Like now currently we are using every three hours, this lion will be able to download its location after every three hours. Right, okay. And uh, sometimes uh, because of uh, uh, the terrain, it can go out to the valleys, mm -hmm. So my satellite receiving is problem. So that time now we back up, we back up with this one, okay. and we are using this one to to track the position of the animal. Right. So how does this work? I mean, do you have to go out in the field with this? Yes, you have to go into the field, uh -huh. and uh, when you are traveling around the park, then now you keep on now changing the the, the location. This is the spot which you receive, okay. and now then from there now you are able to hear the the peeping sound, right. whereby you are able now to follow the particular direction. Wow. Okay. So can can I hold this? Yes. All right. So I can you've now, got this a... particular direction. Yeah. In case the animal here now will you'll get a, a stronger signal okay. and a beeping sound. So you so pretty much. So once you turn it again, yeah. then that signal reduces. The strength of the signal reduces. Ah. It's just like a TV signal. So it, it guides yes. you. So you've it got to go you. around the you national around park the like park. this. <laughs> yes, like that. Okay, so that's got to be charged, charged. Um, to be charged. for it to yes. work. But otherwise, yes. you hear a, a beeping sound. Yes, a beeping sound. sound. Okay. Then now from there, you're able just to tune it where the, strong, the uh -huh. signal is stronger. Then you follow that direction. Okay. So this is um, connected. Yes, connected to that. Yes, it has got two systems. Okay, yes. brilliant. All right, so that is a backup in case uh, the other system doesn't work. And also in case of a cloud cover, all this would interfere with the signal from the satellite, uh -huh. then you can still use this one. All right, yeah. okay, yeah. great. Francis, okay. thank you so much. So really, lots of effort being put into place to conserve lions. In just a moment, we're going to find out much more about the importance of conserving lions. So now we are at the Kenya Wildlife Service Headquarters Club House and with me is Dr. Gakuya. He in fact is the head of veterinary services here at KWS. Great to see you. Earlier we saw you being a very, very busy doctor attending to that lioness. Now, doctor, we have actually left Nyala, that is the name of the five-year-old lioness that was darted out um, in a very dopey, daisy state. Is she going to be okay? Yeah, Nyara is going to be okay. Uh, she's a bit drowsy because the drugs have not completely wear, weared off. Uh, usually the, the drugs we use wears off within one and a half hours. We are there for about one hour, 20 minutes. So in the next uh, 20 minutes, it should be completely, uh, the drowsiness should have completely gone. Okay. But uh, so far, as long as it's on its feet mm -hmm. and there's a team which is monitoring it every other minute, the, the animal is safe. All right, and doctor, according to you, was this a successful and flawless operation that took place? It was very successful, very flawless. We got the animal in the, in, on the first dart. It went down in five minutes. We were with it in very good anesthesia for, um, for about 50 minutes. We were able to revive part of the anesthesia. 
and the animal took about another 20 Latin minutes to be up. So it is very successful. Now your role is very specific. I mean, you're dealing with a wild animal, putting it to sleep and then hoping that, you know, it wakes up again. How critical is it that uh, the person that's carrying out this exercise is highly qualified? It's very delicate. It's a very delicate, uh, delicate operation. You have definitely to be qualified. You must have studied veterinary medicine. You must also have a lot of experience in anesthesia, especially anesthesia of wild, wildlife, which is slightly different from domestic animals, but the principles are the same. So what is required is a lot of keenness. You have to be on top of most of the physiological parameters that tells you the animal is stable and the animal is within the best uh, anesthetic stability. Okay, all right, doctor, thank you very much. That was an amazing experience uh, to be a part of and keep up the great work. I4 is the International Fund for Animal Welfare and joining me now is Steve Njumba. He is in fact the head of special programs. Good to have you Steve. Now I4 is actually the organization that has donated collars such as these uh, to the Kenya Wildlife Service and also camera equipment as well. Tell us how did KWS and I4 get involved together on this issue? Uh, I4 donated six lion collars and 18 of these camera traps okay. to KWS and this was prompted by a conservation management issue that took place uh, last year as early as March. You recall when Mohawk was uh, shot? Yes, and that was one of the park's most iconic lions. Exactly. Mohawk was one of only five mature males at the time and you can imagine one of five shot and if they are shot say monthly in five months, you finish the mature males of Nairobi National Park. Right, and let me just remind our viewers that in fact Mohawk was shot because he strayed sort of out of the boundary of the park and he got close to human beings and KWS themselves are the ones uh, that had to shoot Mohawk very sadly to protect the human beings. And so that really was um, a critical and very, very tragic event. Very tragic event. IFO as an animal welfare organization has a philosophy to protect both wildlife and people. KWS did a management decision to shoot Mohawk to protect human uh, life, and that was a correct decision at the time. But KWS, amidst all the name calling and blame calling that was taking place, also reached out to IFO and discussed preemptive uh, management and active management of the lion population of the park. Let's call out the lion so that we can track them. As an animal welfare organization, this is a last resort. Yes. We do not want lions to be darted and to remain recumbent for. Right. You, you saw it took 40 minutes, one hour. Right, and I, I wanted to get to that. As an animal welfare organization, how do you feel about having to collar lions? I mean, are things so bad that it's now come to this? We have to interfere with our wildlife and collar them? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. Going forward, Development is not going to decrease, if anything, it's going to increase. Nairobi National Park might become like Lake Nakuru National Park. It's going to be completely surrounded by development. And the answer for KWS, for we in the conservation fraternity, is to up our game on active management. We've got three mature males that are left in Nairobi National Park and a number of sub-adult males. KWS already had five callers yeah. on five of their uh, lions. So together with the six, they will be able to monitor the 38 remaining lions because then we just have to know exactly what is going on inside the park yeah. and to protect the people who are outside the park. You know, so much technology here. We see the satellite, we see the collars, uh, the cameras as well and some other mm -hmm. equipment as well. Um, what is the cost of all of this? The cost of the six collars the 18 camera traps and download time for two years, satellite download time, is US dollars 37,000. As IFO, we think that's a reasonable uh, value if we can secure the gene pool of mature lions of Nairobi National Park and protect the community that is around here. I think that is value. Um, we won't have to target coloring the 38 lions of Nairobi National Park. Okay. 27 of them yeah. are uh, young uh -huh. and cubs. Yeah. You don't have to collar them. As long as you've collared a mother okay. of that group, right. you're able to follow them. Uh -huh. So out of the 38, it's only 11 that have got the collars. As an animal welfare organization, we don't want it to happen, but it's the bigger good 
than to have them die one by one like Mohawk was shot last year. Technology sometimes works but it sometimes fails. How do we know that this is the right way forward? We have got five lions collared with similar equipment. It's providing us with very useful information. So this is tested, tried and working. And now the officers of KWS at their laptops at whatever time are able to know where the lions are and direct their men and women rangers to prevent any um, bad action, any bad incidences that might take place. Thank you so much. Uh, you have donated all this equipment, uh, much more as well, to the Kenya Wildlife Service. No doubt it is uh, the right thing to do in order to protect our lions. Thank you. So I'm back with Sam, the head of research here at the Kenya Wildlife Service. And Sam, it really has been an exciting day, um, both for us who have witnessed this collaring for the very first time. Well, it's a unique experience. Yes, so. and of course for KWS who have received uh, these collars. Now, let's just talk about the bigger picture. Why is the conservation of lions so important? Lions play a very important role both in nature and to the economy of this country. In nature, lion is a lion, the lion is a top predator and actually it's among the big five, it's among the species which determine the environment in which they live. For example, if there are too many warthogs in an area, then it may indicate that there are too few lions because they bring about a natural balance of species. And they also play a role in removing like the, the less fit animals which they prey on and other roles which they play as, as a predator, top, top predator in, in, in the world. Now for the economy, the lion is among the big five yeah. which brings tourists to this country. A lot of people in some parks, for example in Savo, they say we only go to Savo, we must see a lion on in the Mara and I think that's, that, that indicates how important they are for, for bringing in tourists, of course, which uh, brings money to foreign revenue to this country. What are the threats that face lions? Because as much as they are pretty much at the top of the food chain, they are also facing various critical issues. In the bush, they may face competition or threats from other large carnivores like hyenas, which kill their cubs. But the main threat for Kenya is human beings. Because of human activities through land use changes, they are losing their space in this country. And they are getting squeezed into ever decreasing as, as areas. Actually now mainly to the protected areas, where they used to range outside protected areas. But now that is not possible in a lot of places in this country. Yeah. Now, lions are also getting killed by farmers or livestock because they, they kill their livestock because of decreasing natural food availability. Yeah. So in some areas, a long time ago when there used to be a lot of prey or food for the lions, they, they really didn't kill as many livestock as sure. they are doing today. Sure. But now they have learned to kill livestock, which uh, results in human lion conflict. Of course. And then it radiotically killing follows. Right. And you know, when some people look at uh, a national park, you know, they may think that why does a lion need so much space? There is so much land around them. So why is space critical to a lion? I think a lion needs a minimum amount of space mm -hmm. to meet its or their uh, year-round needs. Okay. These include shelter, food, uh, food of course, and then uh, breeding areas. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this is disappearing and the national parks, for example Nairobi Park, is, is too small for the, for the current uh, number of lions which we have. Oh, really? And this is where they range out and, and go to attack livestock because they are not meeting all their year-round year needs within the park. And of course lions are territorial as well so one male may own a certain sort of space of land and that means another lion cannot come in and take over that space. Exactly and as the population increases they need more space right. to, to accommodate uh, um, new recruits into the population. So Sam, what needs to be done to ensure that our lions are conserved and protected? Now, at the moment, we have to preserve and conserve what the, the remaining population. And this could be through the use of technology by understanding their movements and behavior. We also need the public to be more aware. I think in some areas, people tend to kill lions unnecessary other than reporting to Kenya Wildlife Service for the necessary action. So we will urge the public 
to report any cases of lions out at protected areas to Kenya Wildlife Service as soon as they can. And scaling is, is not a solution because we can sell a lion over and over and earn this country a lot of money other than just a one-off killing. Well, Sam, you've been involved in conservation for 30 long years. That is pretty incredible. How optimistic are you about the future of our lion population in Kenya? Yeah, very op optimistic. Uh, incidentally, I did a review of the uh, population, of the lion population in the whole of Africa for CITES, Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Fauna and Flora. Yes. And the East Africa population, including Kenya, uh, is, is, is not too bad. Okay. The West Africa population has disappeared. The Southern Africa population is increasing slightly because most of them have uh, actively managed. Uh -huh. But for Kenya, 10 years ago we had about 2,200 lions. Today we have just slightly below 2,000. So the decline has not been too drastic. Right. But now we are taking uh, remedial measures. We have a conservation and management strategy, which spells out a very clear roadmap on how to, to save the species. And we have, we have been implementing it and we are seeing some positive uh, results because the decline would have been much worse than what we are seeing today. And with uh, improved conservation of the species through use of more modern technology, we are optimistic that our population will survive for a longer time. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, Sam, for the work you and your team and the entire um, crew at KWS do. Keep it up. Thank, thank you Thank you very much. much indeed, too. And I think the public will be more educated about Of course, yeah. no doubt. Well, you know what? Lions really are magnificent animals. They are the king of the jungle and they really do need to be conserved. All right, we are now shifting focus from our chat about lions. Let's now ask you our wild guess question. How many of the 38 lions in the Nairobi National Park are collared? How many of the 38 lions in the Nairobi National Park are collared? To participate, you must like the NTV Wild Facebook page and only answers posted on the timeline post that's associated with this question will be considered. The first person to answer correctly wins a delicious dinner for two at the Hadassah Hotel, part of Superior Hotels Kenya, plus free entry for four people and a vehicle to any national park of their choice, courtesy of the Kenya Wildlife Service, one bottle of wine, courtesy of Wines of the World, and a gift hamper, courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Terms and conditions apply and can be found on the NTV Wild Facebook page. Last week's lucky winner was Bernard Muniri. And now, here is our Wild Pick segment. This is George Meliza at the Lake Nakuru National Park. He was taking a selfie with this beautiful zebra, and George says he was there for a game drive with friends to enjoy the beauty of our country. They were out there looking for white rhinos. At the border of Kenya and Tanzania in the Maasai Mara, this is a snap of Kenya Kariuki. She was posing for a pic in her Kenyan attire and says that she was enjoying an afternoon game drive in the Mara. At the Nairobi National Park, this is Suheb Alvi. He was taking a selfie with a lioness called Lara from the Kingfisher Pride in the background. Suheb was there on a game drive during his free time. This is Evans of the Ambo at the David Sheldricks Wildlife Trust. Evans was petting Dotto, the baby orphaned elephant. And Evans says that he was there thanks to the inspiration that NTV Wild gives him every week and it's driven him to love animals to this extent. And Victor Okemwa was at the Arabuko Sokoke Snake Park. He was being really brave holding and interacting with a huge python. Victor says he was there on an academic field trip and he likes enjoying the natural ecosystem. If you want your photo showcased on our Wild Pick segment, just like our NTV Wild Facebook page and send a photo that shows you celebrating nature via private message. Include your full name, tell us where the photo was taken, what you were doing and why. In Kenya, 
Humans are the biggest threat to lion populations, one of the world's top most predators. Now, while efforts are being made to conserve and protect lion populations, you too can always do your bit. Please come out and see these incredible creatures for yourselves. Learn about them, spread the knowledge, be more tolerant of them too. And you can also get involved in citizen science. Just contact the Kenya Wildlife service to find out how. Remember that a lion alive is worth so much more than a lion dead. Well that's it on NTV Wild Talk with me Smriti Vidyarthi. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you again next Tuesday at 10pm.